Hey guys, DJ Benevolent Brandon here. I know this seems a little weird, but this is just how this interview is going to have to go. <laughs> uh, I'm here with Penn from Sick. How you doing? It's good. It's good to meet you, man. It's really good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, he's graced us enough with his time to show us some of the guitars that he's playing for this tour that he's on, supporting Periphery. Absolutely. So, run me down, man. I'm a, I'm as much of a gear well, gear geek as you are. <laughs> let's start with the gigs. It's not too different to Dan. So I'm running the um, KSL. Colossus, okay. which Kyle kindly put together for us for this tour. Um, it's been killer. Um, new addition to my rig as well is the Line 6 Helix. I've heard so many good things about the Helix. It's been killer so far. I can't say that I've got into it to where I want it to be yet. I'm really at the moment just using it as an effects controller okay. and the MIDI switching for the app. So. Yes, I understand. Um, I think in time I'll run it a bit differently. I might start playing maybe for some specific clean tones and stuff. I might okay. direct out through that. Again, the fact that I think I can do really well with the, uh, the modeling if I've got my own impulse responses and whatnot that you know, it gives me a backup. I can duplicate everything I use as a main tone and if that worst case situation I've ever got backup. You can always just or, go direct out of the helix. Yeah. And if I or if I you know sometimes we fly out to one offs and then you know you arrive there and have only got a Marshall JCM eight hundred and it's not gonna do what I want it to do. So this will be a That'll be yeah, a nice replacement. Absolutely, yeah. But for now, the KSR Colossus is just absolutely killer. Yeah. Big shout out to Kyle Rhodes for that because that is a magnificent amp. It is a crazy amp. It's Dan was showing me his when I was doing his rig rundown, and it's absolutely awesome. I mean, got to I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to hear what it's going to be like loud. Yeah, it's, it's open a, up the tubes and let it saturate. It's a great experience. It is. So, I mean, there's nothing particularly complex about this. I use the sort of four cable method, so I've got effects placed where I want them. Okay. This is great, as again, insofar as you can literally put anything anywhere. So it's, um, that's really cool. Tell us a little about, about the cab that you're using, another KSR so again, I'm seeing. Yeah, this is the KSR cab that he put together. Um, recently, my favorite speaker combination has all been Celestian, and I'm using um, sort of cross pattern of um, vintage verses and K100s, which be, gives me all my mids and bark out those 30s, but the sparkle and low end. Yep, them. the vintage 30s are pretty standard for this kind of application. Exactly. Um, and I think they go to pair together really well. Uh, we also DI out sort of after the head just to give a bit of a director sound as well okay the sound guy's got it just using the palmer junction okay um nothing too excellent you know it's yeah. just a way another way of getting the noise out the amp so um show us some of your guitars so yeah let's have a look at this um i don't trip over the helix control so i've got a couple of black machines oh with shit me. this is um, a black machine yeah so this one is really quite old now. It's I probably got it in 2004. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely in a stage where he was very much still experimenting. So this is probably the thinnest guitar you will ever come across. Oh my, that is some thin. Yeah, but it doesn't sound it. <laughs> That's the great thing. So we just oh, I forgot to put the back plate on. Smooth. Um, just running a mahogany body. Um, it's a Sapila top. So it's just a little bit co more colourful. Snakewood fingerboard, which Ooh. is unusual. Um, again, then Rose Honduras Rosewood neck with mm -hmm. snake snake fillets, really. So they're kind of very simple in their way, but he's a, he crafts a functional instrument. It's not all about having every bell and whistle. It's just making something it sounds incredible. What pickups are in them? Uh, these are, again, um, they were developed by Doug which is Mr. Black Machine himself, with a, just a pickup builder. They just made a very small amount. I mm -hmm. tried them out and I love them there. They're quite low output. I think they're around the 11 and a half K on the bridge, which I like because oh, I okay. like my dynamic. So I yes, like, I understand I like that. I control of it. I was previously using hotter pickups. I found them, especially when you're going to clean, if the pickup won't allow you to go clean without rolling everything right back, it's too hot. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of pa active electronics myself. I'm. I'm a huge on the uh, the passives. 
yeah. because that gives you it gives you variations in tone and in timbre exactly. every single time that you pick it up. Yeah, and you can literally, I think the ex expression you can sort of put into your playing is just better. Magnificent, buddy. I've never seen a black machine in person. I've heard so much about them. Then we have the black black machines. So this one's again broken headstock, um, fine, <laughs> but. Um, so this one's again, it's oh, like- Oh wow, that this finish thing. is beautiful. So it is literally ebony. <laughs> the whole thing is ebony. Ebony, ebony fingerboard, fruit. ebony headstock. Yeah, ebony fillets, ebony back plate. Uh, this one's got the swamp ash body. That's gorgeous. Which is, yeah, it is a special. Um, Do you find this one is a lot brighter than your other? It is brighter. Um, it got brighter again when I, I recently had to refret this one. So I've got the stainless steel frets on this now. And good choice. Super, Very good super choice. Smooth. Um, brass nut on both of them, which is generally I like what it does to the sort of attack. Mm -hmm. um, this one I've got. I've wired in a coil tap instead of a instead of a tone but not I don't okay. overdo it with the tone. So. You don't do you use that very often during your shows? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I mean on a black machine why wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, it's just getting the different tones. Obviously the ugly graph tech saddles which I kind of found ironic to put something that's a bit nasty on it. <laughs> so. Would you look to replace that in the future? No. I think I'm quite happy with it looking a bit, real, a that's, bit wrong. That's fair, that's yeah. fair. <laughs> uh, I kind of treat so, you know, I have a lot of conversation with people about these and... Um, those are the uh, Spurzel locking tuners on them? They are on this one, yeah. I need to change those on that, actually, because they're just standard, <laughs> I think they're just shallow winders, I can't remember, but, um, yeah. I talk to a lot of people about, sort of, oh God, you've taken your black machines on tour, and it's like, well, they're an instrument and they're my tool, so I'm going to take what I want to play, you know. Precisely. I, it's, all about, it's all about your sound and it's all about comfortability on stage. That's it. Yeah, you know, that's the best of both worlds. You got that, you're set. Everything else is your fault. That's it, yeah. <laughs> or an airline's fault, who knows. But, or an airline's yeah. fault. Always, I can't believe how awful the airlines oh, are. It can be bad. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good combination. I mean, I actually... The other day I had a bit of a sort of problem with a bunch of stuff and ended up literally playing plugged straight into the front of the amp, not even able to change channels and things and that, I kind of like that as well when it's just man and guitar and an amp, you know, and you get your clean sounds by rolling off and yeah. actually being in control. Uh, what, are you using a wireless system? Not on this tour, but I have in the past used the 9.6 type wireless stuff. Um, Do you have the G90? I had the G90 to let it That's what I have. It blew up on me though. Oh really? Yeah. What happened to it? It literally went terminal about two weeks outside its warranty period, which isn't a good oh. argument. But I'm, I'm being mean, it's probably, it might have just been a transit issue, it's got bashed or something, but I'll get another one, put it that way. It's, uh, I can understand. I think the sound for a wireless unit, they are transparent I don't notice a loss like they're cool yeah they're super cool yeah that's kind of it with me I mean if I get really boring and strings I tend to use the elixirs I've run off a 10 to 52 set I know you guys fine but we have that lo real low drop tuning so which turns down to G sharp or A flat whichever you prefer mm -hmm. so then I just switch out with a 56 which again it's still kind of light for something yeah, like that. The problem is, is when you're going an octave between switch strings, I've just chucked a 65 on or something like that, but what happens is it just sounds like a dead string next to everything else. So you have to be a bit careful with the playing and just, yeah, get a feel for it rather than... Yeah, um, a lot, one of the guitars that I use, which is the um, Epiphone Thunder Horse okay. Brendan Small Explorer, yeah. I keep that tuned to C standard, which is two whole steps down yeah, yeah. from standard, and I use a 62 for the low E, yeah. and it feels just like I'm picking up an E standard guitar. Exactly, now it's, that makes sense. And it sounds amazing. Yeah, I think it's just that balance between them. You know, I'd like to go a bit heavy, but as I say, it's how the strings sound next to each other that changes it for me. It's Absolutely, I can understand. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty simple setup, but it's very respectable. Yeah. Um, very respectable that you're brave enough to bring black <laughs> machines out on the road, but it's all about comfortability and sound, my man. Exactly. It's it all it is. Yeah. I, I missed out on a new one for this tour. He, he was giving me one for this tour, but he missed it by a couple of days, which is a shame, but then oh. I thought about it, and that sort of 
potential of post-tour depression when you get home and everything quietens down for a bit. Very, I'll have a new guitar. So today. hopefully you'll have a very much anticipated NGD when you get back exactly. to the UK. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's been Ring Rundown for... Uh, yeah, for Pin. That's mine. For Pin. <laughs> this is DJ Benevolent Brandon signing out.